Okay, it's taken me a day to process everything. The referees have been announced. Yes. I just had to watch social media for a day to see the South African paranoia kick in, the South African insecurity kick in. South Africans are already blaming the referee. We haven't even played France. And Ben O'Keefe is under the radar, mate. <laughs> People are a bit nervous. People are nervous because it's France. People are nervous because it's in France. People are nervous because it's Ben O'Keefe. And people say the last time that Ben O'Keefe refereed us, we lost. We lost to Ireland. We lost to Ireland 13-8 and they all blamed him. I went on the SA Rugby magazine thread, rate the ref. <laughs> also started with a P and ended with an S. <laughs> and it certainly wasn't Princess. And 60% of the wonderful faithful on SA Rugby magazine said that he was a disgrace. Okay, he was below par. 15% said that he was okay. <laughs> and 20% said he was a combination of good and excellent. Correct. I personally thought he was outstanding in that island game. He gave them as much as he gave us. Yeah. And he even got a ton lashing from Johnny Sexton, who during a break went over to him, and it is on video, it's out there somewhere, in the big web, and said to mate, stop coaching them out of a penalty that you should be awarding. Just blow it. And Ben O'Keefe acknowledged it and said, you're right. All in the name of flow. Ben O'Keefe has had his controversies, but he's not going to be the issue on Sunday. Is he older or younger than Sexton? He's younger. I he's 34, so. and that's why he called him sir. <laughs> um. Um. Um, um, Johnny. Um. I Thank apologize. Ik waardeer het. Dank je, Janni. Dank je, Janni. Janni, u. Ja. Speaking about referees, I don't know why we're doing a whole show about refs. Apparently, this is a talking point. I'm sure your buddy, Survivor Graham, had something to say about refs, surely. He did. I mean, he sent me 33 messages last night. Uh, the last one arriving at about 20 to 2, <laughs> with one more consideration, <laughs> having, gone, having gone through every one of Ben O'Keefe's performances against Sunday. He Africa. might have survived Survivor, mate. He's not going to make it through this show. I can see why this guy won Survivor. <laughs> yeah. He leaves no stone unturned. <laughs> oh, I like what you did there. <laughs> he's outstanding. And he's obviously of the belief that uh, Ben O'Keefe did us a bit in that last uh, two, three minutes, and especially with the mall. Mm by blowing the mall to be over when he couldn't see the ball immediately down to interpretation what is immediately yeah. uh, the five second rule obviously doesn't apply when you don't want it to apply mate this and coffee that you got me is it's a liter it's a liter eh? and it's not from Vita by the way not it's today, from Wild mate. Bean I got this oak the 4950 special I got him a muffin and I got him a water a muff muffin was full value and I mean I thought with those guns that he carries that he can pick up a liter of I'm at a carb session today mate mate Okay. Back it off. I'm talking Sorry. about Survivor Graham and what he had to say. Some very Ken good Obeef. insights because everyone's talking about Ken O'Beef, okay? And saying he's got some beef with us, but he doesn't. I just love those kind of like cringe jokes of us. <laughs> ben O'Keefe <laughs> is being played <laughs> like a banjo, a Mexican banjo. <laughs> the way Rusty came out, so that we, 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 we play Ireland, okay? And, and Ken O'Beef is going to be the ref. And then. <laughs> So we go into that game, and I think we've lost one with him in seven. Okay, is that right? Eight. And, and let's qualify that the one we lost with him was 38-3 when Alistair Katia was the coach. So up until that game, he had refereed Rassi and Jock five times, and we had never lost. We had never lost, and the one which was the most significant was the second test against the British and Irish Lions after that disgraceful performance from Nick Berry. The you world's yeah. eyes were on Ben O'Keefe. He had come out of a... Sh few shockers Eddie Jones had called him Wales's 16th player uh, Dave Rennie your good mate David. had called him a, a shocker uh, for sending off uh, the Wallaby winner the Fijian one Korabati uh, against France <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you said that and that was actually overturned it was a rescinded I like that word <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Ben O'Keefe went into that test match inexperienced in terms of how many internationals he had done with the eyes of the world on him the British media on him and me on him okay and I kind of really spelt out all his mistakes heavily <laughs> consistently yeah. for about a week yeah Leading into that test, yeah. 41,000 Facebook shares. 
tapping into what he had done wrong <laughs> every time he had refereed. Yes. And he put in a magnificent performance. 100 minutes it took, 27-9, and no one had a complaint. So we're not going to put that kind of heat on, on Ben O'Keefe this week. we? <laughs> <laughs> but we are talking about him. Tom Cruise, my favorite actor, has never made it well. <laughs> made, made, made almost every movie fantastic, um, with few exceptions. And oh. uh, he did a movie a while back called The Firm. I don't know if you watched it. I did. Yeah. Tom is so happy with this promotion. He's at this new company, and just these oaks, they give him a house, they give him a fancy merc. Oak is living the life. The world is his oyster. And only later on does he realize he's actually working for the firm. And I think Ken O'Beef is about to find out he's working for the firm. When Rusty came out after that game, which we had some suspicions about whether the box actually wanted to win it. And he lavished praise on the referee like he did. Ben O'Keefe, incredible performance. What a great referee. Even though we lost that guy, he really knows his stuff. What a coincidence. I don't think he said it like that. I think he said, thank you, Ben. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. What a coincidence that that's the guy that is refing the box, the world champions against France, the hosts in Paris on Sunday. What are you actually trying to I'm say? I'm just saying yeah. Russi's done his homework. The box know exactly how Ben O'Keefe referees. They'll have a very good picture how they're going to manage him. And I think that, I think we're in a great position. I think Ben O'Keefe is the perfect referee this weekend. I, I think he's the best one to do our game. And I think yeah. he's been one of the best at the World Cup. Yeah. And, um, and I think he'll be fair. And if he makes a mistake, it's because that is human error. Correct. I mean, uh, you look at someone like Nick Berry. That guy doesn't belong in Test Rugby. Every single time he referees, it's about himself. Uh, there's so much that you take from the game that you think, come on, mate, that's not down to interpretation. And it's not down to incompetence. I'm sure that's down to a bit of bias. Yes. And if ever I've seen a bloke with a small man syndrome, <laughs> the last time I saw a guy with, uh, a guy with, with such a small man complex, it was Napoleon. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> huh? You've been writing about rugby for a long time. I know. But Nick Berry, I mean, thank God we could have had him. Yeah. Thank God we don't have him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean well, by we, that, thank the good Lord. Well, we did have him, didn't we, against Tonga? Isn't it? Yeah, but we don't have him for this No, no, no. Match. No, no, no. Didn't, didn't, uh, he, did, um, he did Ireland, Scotland. We, we yeah. just don't have him, mate. I don't want to have Just to in case you're you confused, again. we don't have Nick Berry this weekend. We've got yeah. Ben O'Keefe. We've got Ben O'Keefe, and South Africans should be happy that we got Ben O'Keefe. Mm. We did not lose to Ireland 13 points to 8 because of Ben O'Keefe. We lost to Ireland because after six stolen lineup balls that we stole from them, we stopped competing. We mm. lost to Ireland because we never kicked to the corner to more. We lost to Ireland because we couldn't find our jumpers in the last 15 minutes. We lost to Ireland because we let, missed 11 points off the tee. That was three penalties Intriguing. and a conversion. We lost to Ireland because the referee didn't give us a raw deal at all. And we lost to Ireland because they scored 13 points. We lost to Ireland because on the day they were better yeah. than the Springboks. Exactly. They had more points and that's all that counts at the mm -hmm. end. And if you think Ben O'Keefe has anything against the Springboks, go and watch that British and Irish Alliance second test. 27-9, I repeat that score. A record score. I love that game. 27-9 we won. He was fair in everything he did. He was firm. He was definitive. And he was certain. I'm just going to say something now that nobody's talking about. Okay? Nobody's talking about it. This is big. Ben O'Keefe. B-O-K. I mean... Bok what more do you want? <laughs> Ah, what more wow. do you want? You've been doing your homework. Mate, eh? I did my homework. Yeah. I did my homework. I looked into it. And that's what I found. And you in Army Green? Army Green. Oaks took issue with us wearing black. So I went for something a bit more fashionable. Salmon. This is literally my wife. She was like, listen, you're always in white and black. What's the story? The box are playing. Wear green. I like that Army Green as well. I wouldn't mind seeing I said, yes, ma'am. Huh? Uh, I just looked at myself and thought, you know, you've been in black too much. It's summer. The sun's out. Um... Put on some lovely salmon. Salmon, mate. You can never go wrong with salmon. Never go wrong with you salmon. You appeal to everybody with salmon. Whether it's on your plate or on this physique, <laughs> it makes an impression. <laughs> but coming back to Ben O'Keefe. Yes. That pass from Marnie LeBoc. Marnie LeBoc. Colby. Yes. 
All he had to do was basically sh- throw a short pass and we walk it in under the post and Marnie Lebok kicks the conversion and no one talks about his uh, goal. Marnie Lebok does what? He then throws the elaborate oh. 40 meter forward pass. Speculator. <laughs> everyone believes it's gone forward. Well. In terms of everyone in Ireland and the neutrals. Every adult. Ben O'Keefe says, mate, I'm happy with it. <laughs> he says, his hands have gone backwards. I'm happy with it. I yeah. don't care where it's ended. Yeah. But have a little check. I'm awarding the try. Yeah. TMO says, I'm happy with it. If they had wanted to screw us, they could have done it there. Easily. Because it was debate. So we go that back to, is it, it was, yeah, I mean, that was, Did it go was, forward from the pot? Did it go back fa- of the hands? Factually, it was forward. Interpretation again. Yes. And by the way, there is a great video somewhere <laughs> on youtube that zells did about forward passes oh mate it's it a caused bit. a lot of consternation among referees in the world yeah i'm reckoning ben o'keefe will do us no favors and he will do the french no favors he will officiate that game as best he sees it and to quote the great sean fitzpatrick who was one of the best referees in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant! Fitzy. Fitzy used to say, <laughs> when you look at our position, you think, how many points can they score at best against us? If the answer is 32, they had to get 33 when he was with the Auckland Blues or the All Blacks. This guy's a genius. Always one point more. This guy, I mean... But Fitzy also used to say, <laughs> it's a lot of Fitzy in his stories, <laughs> that if you've got to rely on your kicker to win you the game in the 81st minute, then you should be looking at the other 14 players, not the guy who has to kick that kick. Don't ever blame him if he misses. You should have won the game before that. And finally, Fitzy said, I like that, Fitzy says, if you're a good enough team, you'll always take the referee out the game. Physically. You will take him out the game if you're a good enough team. Yeah, and no, that's a good I point. I think the box are a good enough team to render Ben O'Keefe number 31 on the field and not number one. Mm. And talking about taking a referee Great out line. the game. And I hate all this paranoia and this insecurity with South African supporters when it comes to referees. Mm. I was with the box back in the day, Durban, 17 all. The momentum was with us against the All Blacks. We were on the cusp of what we thought was going to be a famous victory. And lo and behold, the only bloke wearing a Bok jersey that day that understood the breakdown and came from behind the gate. <laughs> Disgustingly big fat Piet van Sale. Uh, and he took Dave McHugh out. The referee got changed and the momentum went the other way. Wasn't Richie the first to the break? Richie was the first to the break. Again. The first guy to clobber this guy. Yeah. And I think the Bok players also said, you know, that guy irritates us so much. Not only does he win the ball on the ground? He also lands the first punch on our supporter. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we get beaten by this guy all the time. That was also terrible after that. You know, we had to apologize to Dave McHugh. We had to apologize to him as if we had done it. <laughs> it wasn't us, mate. <laughs> I know the bike was wearing an old box jersey, but it wasn't us. <laughs> but he really did show up our loose forwards that day uh, in terms of his understanding Big time. of the AJ laws. AJ Fento, slow to react. Uh, slow to react. Slow to and he was right there looking at I think at he was Richie. wearing gloves as well, which just adds yeah. to it. And we were staying at the Ellen and uh, the day McGee was walking around there, oh, beating up, no, he couldn't hurry, don't happen to me. Was like, <laughs> well, he uh, talking with an Irish accent? Uh, well, I think he was Irish, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> is I he think still he was. <laughs> I think he still is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's again, South Africans, and I, I follow that thing religiously uh, after every match, and I dig the way SA Rugby Magazine does it, rate the ref, okay? Mm. Even when we win, it starts with a P and ends with an okay? <laughs> yeah. our, our, our South African supporters just can't actually appreciate, by and large, I know there's the odd one out there that does get it, yeah. that this person is only just officiating. And if they do make a howler, it will be shown up. There's so many cameras around. But no one's out to get us. We're a popular team. Zira Khaleesi is the most popular captain in world rugby. We're popular like Al, Al Capone. And he should thank Nick Berry for showing him so much disrespect <laughs> because after that, Sia gets shown all the respect in the world by referees True that. and by match officials. Rassi gets shown respect. And the one thing about this South African team and with their leadership, and that's because of their coach, mm. they do know the laws of the game. And they do know what comes down to interpretation. And if mm. you're going to intimidate a referee, calmly remind him of the law as you see it as a player or as your coach sees it. Mm. Uh, I once spoke to Jonathan Kaplan, one of the best there has ever been. Oh, mate, easily, in terms easily of the best. World referees, 
also prone to the odd mistake. Sure. He was running the touch 2007 when he missed that forward pass. Uh, but I asked him one day, do you guys give Richie McCaw kind of latitude? Do you give him favours? Is it because he's the All Blacks captain? And he said the thing about Richie McCaw is he had never met a player that knows the laws so well. And he says when the guy's an All Black captain, he's played 50-odd tests, and you're a young referee, and you're running around, and he quotes subsections to you while he's running past you, <laughs> yeah. but says he can understand why you took a different interpretation. <laughs> yeah. You kind of are very, very circumspect the next time you blow him, yeah. which is never. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What am I doing? Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. blew the mighty wreck. Mark. Exactly. I just penalised him. So it's that understanding, and Rice, he certainly does understand the laws, and that gives us a huge advantage going into, into Sunday's quarterfinal against France. It's going to be a massive game, two physical packs. And I think Ben O'Keefe, with his personality, mm. is the perfect guy to keep it calm as well. He's very relaxed in terms of the way he approaches the game, but very fair. So come on, guys, gals however you identify, and just lay off the referee in the build-up to this game, okay? If you're going to slaughter him, do it at midnight. I was going to say, <laughs> as soon as the final whistle blows, all bets are off. <laughs> then SA Rack will be running the poll. Right, the ref. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know there's a guy out in Brackenfell, a big, big, big supporter of SA Huge Rack. Huge Andre Joubert. We Ooh. call him Aster. Yeah. I know he rates the referee. <laughs> it's one word. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a good one with Ben O'Keefe. Okay? Yes. And and historically, he's been very good to the box. They obviously, he enjoys the way they play. The only defeat under Rassi and Jacques, and we keep on reinforcing this, was the one in the World Cup 13-8. It certainly wasn't down to him. And that last one where he did say he can't see the ball, uh, strictly speaking, he's correct in the way he applied it. On another day, he may have applied it a bit differently. But the box didn't seem to shatter it either. No, not um, at all. That he went Ireland's way, Ireland were euphoric. It looked like they'd won the World Cup. We even did an English thing. We, we did a lap of honour to thank our supporters for being there. So uh, that game's con con consigned to history as our opening defeat against the All Blacks in 2019 was. And when we did win the World Cup, no one was talking about that game. True that. So looking at the other matches, I looked at all the referees and they've all had a little bit of controversy in their day, okay? Uh, Papes. <laughs> Our guy. Now you're starting with Papes. You're going to start with Papes. Okay. You're going to start with Wales. <laughs> okay. Wales. Wales against the Pumas. Pumas, one of my favorite teams because they come out of Buenos Aires, one of my favorite cities. And they've got the nicer jerseys. And no, 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 no. Yes, they do, man. Wales are red. Come on. Nice. No, Wales. That Pumas jersey, surely. It's a lovely jersey, but Other Wales. Other than the box oh, jersey, that's that got to be the best. Wales red. I just oh, love it. That rich, rich Welsh Does red. it remind you of Liverpool, mate? No, mate, not at all. It reminds me of Wales. <laughs> okay. And you know when, when, when Wales, uh, Max Boyce? Yes. Famous, famous, famous uh, or legendary comedian. Whenever they used to lose to the All Blacks, which was every year. <laughs> <laughs> and he would always take great comfort from, at least we had the nation jersey. <laughs> <laughs> he would also say they kept their side of the field very tight. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Wales, and you know the history between World Cups, Wales, and Yaku Paper? No. So in 2019, Wales played France okay. in a quarterfinal that Wales won 2019. But they scored 10 points when uh, Yaku Paper sent off Remember the Fijian-born, <laughs> and I can't pronounce his name, uh, <laughs> Locke, that yes. plays for France. Yes. And the whole momentum of the game swung. Yes. <laughs> the game ended later on in Japan. Great festivities. The drink is flowing. Yeah. Papes is a wonderful guy. Fantastic referee, but I mean, he's a, he's a mensch. He likes to guard and he likes to have a care. Yes. He finds himself with about 30-odd Welsh supporters. Coincidentally. Coincidentally, okay. He then mimics with them, elbow to the face, <laughs> send off. <okay? laughs> and the picture goes viral okay <laughs> that picture you've seen on your screen now goes viral world rugby suspends papes for the rest of the world cup and punishes him for a deemed bias and he doesn't referee again in the world cup now he's back <laughs> who's he's he back in a quarter who's final. he refing this week he's back in a quarter final <laughs> And he's referee Wales. <laughs> Sorry, Pumas. So I rest my case. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's hasta la vista. It's bye bye, and it's uh, the Pumas are going to have to play very well to take <laughs> this referee out the game. Extremely well. <laughs> yeah. oh, Nick Mallet's back. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe no. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't disagree with you there. I think Wales are obviously the team, uh, they're the favourites of the bookies team. Uh, Argentina be diabolical, very disappointing. Uh, lost arguably their best forward for this match. And they just need to go home now because nothing's actually happening. They're just wasting everyone's time now. You've turned on Shake, eh? I have, I've turned on Mike. I thought... He'll uh, be back in Australia coaching the Wallabies when Eddie takes <laughs> the Japan job. <laughs> the Warren eyes. No, so anyway... I think you're right. Wales. Papes, but, Papes uh, for Wales. Yeah, Pape, but Papes has been good. I, I think Papes is a great, uh, a great referee. And uh, Jake doesn't always think so, Jake White. It's a wonderful story that when Jake was coaching <laughs> the Brumbies and Papes was refereeing against uh, <laughs> Solly's Kins in, in Canberra, they got the 28 all draw. Uh, they scored in the 83rd minute. Catricalis, uh, Dimitri Catricalis kicked the conversion. And at 28 20 at the Bruce Stadium, Jake starts walking down. He's basically, the game's over. It's 80 minutes. Well, that Papes has played into, I think they're about 34th phase at this stage. Okay? <laughs> He's walking the Kins to the trial. <laughs> <laughs> it's just advantage after advantage <laughs> after advantage. And, um, and for those who kind of don't believe me, it's somewhere there. If you, if you go and pull out that match tape, it's there. Um, and much to Jake's disgust, as the Kins score, to basically level the game up because the kick under the post is not going to be missed. Papes hops in the air with jubilation. <laughs> as he the the try. <laughs> and that really irked Jake. Okay? He's never forgotten it. Never forgotten it. Yeah. Classic. So, but I enjoy Yaku Pape and I think... Uh, yeah, great ref. As great as it is that the box are in the quarterfinal, kudos to South Africa's top referee, yeah. Yaku Pape. He's referee in a quarterfinal. Uh, and... You know, I, 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 he's consistently been for me in the top three, four referees in the world. Yeah. And on his day, as good as anyone else that has refereed the game. And a really cool guy as well off the mm. field. Referee with a personality. I mean, that's hard to get. Very hard to find in rugby, mate. Yeah, very hard to find, mate. Uh, talking about referees with personalities, you know, one, one of the big referees that I enjoyed was, uh, was Nick Mallet because he coached me at school and <laughs> he used to referee uh, some of our games as well. <laughs> and I was playing in the A team and then he dropped me. Well, what year are we talking about? Ah, this is, uh, we're talking the early 80s, okay? And what, so what was Nick at that time? Nick was, uh, had to do his practical at school. Okay. He, was a, he was a geography, physics teacher, English teacher and that. And uh, he was playing for province and uh, I was at Fairmont High in, in Durnville and under 15 I was the worst in the, in the school. We were useless, okay? Hmm. And so the first, he came for six months and the, the principal wanted him to coach the first team. He said, no, what's the worst team in your school? The under 15 A's. Well, that was us. So he, he took us and... Uh, we, uh, he saw us playing a little touch that day and I was playing fly off and I was the vice captain for the under, under 15 A's and he picked a B team to play Weinberg C team um, the following Tuesday and he picked me to play at inside centre. And I was trying to tell him, but I was, I was the... I'm the, I'm the A I'm captain. Adam, he says, you were. You were. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nicker. You were. And I was the vice captain. You were. So I, I gathered I was X as the fluff and, uh, and as the uh, vice captain and we played Weinberg and I think we lost something like 35, 25. And, and we got 25 thanks to Nick, okay? okay. The, 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 just the, the presence of Nick Mallet, yeah. okay? And uh, he was a wonderful coach. And I was playing inside center, and he would, every time they would get the ball, he would scream to their 12, run at 12, he doesn't want to tackle. <laughs> and I'd look him and say, run at 12, he doesn't want to tackle. And <laughs> <laughs> so we're high. Hit 12, he doesn't like to be hit. So was he refing the game <laughs> he's as well? The game. So he's your coach, he's refing and he's telling he's, them yeah, who to run He's coaching both sides, okay? He was, just, he was just wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, and the story there is that we, uh, we ended up, we had never won a game, we ended up uh, losing our first game in charge against Settlers in our derby. Uh, the province that day lost 18-9 to, uh, to Robbie Blair's Transvaal, five penalties in the drop goal. Nick came there on the Monday, said to us, I believe you lost to your neighbours, uh, your rivals is a disgrace. I said to him, I believe you lost to Robbie Blair's boot. Well, that was the end of me. Okay, <laughs> five meter in, forwards run at him. This guy doesn't like to tackle. It just ran over me for about the whole session. Yeah. Yeah. But he was just, he was just a wonderful, wonderful, for, for us as 15 year olds, a wonderful guy to have coaching. And uh, he's one of the great coaches of, of World Rugby, one Spot of the great on. commentators. Yeah. But uh, a mensch as well. I mean, he just, that's like, just like, he was clapping us left, right, and center. He would tell us not to do our homework. Uh, and then he'd call us up for our homework the next day. <laughs> and, and then he would cane us in front of like the girls and he'd say, the chicks love it. <laughs> Just take one. <laughs> no, what a beaut. He was brilliant. And our last game at school, we, we under 15s, we beat Paul Boy's B team, which was probably at about seven Craven Week players. Yeah. Okay? Four team spring four, box. Team four back in the day. And you know, Nick always talks about himself in the third person. And he would come into the change before the game and he says, they love Mallet out here. <laughs> they love Mallet. The aunts, the uncles, the cousins, they all want Mallet's signature. <laughs> he says, 
I would thought you guys were going to take 60, but now I think it's 30. <laughs> Mallet's already given you 30 points, okay? Wow, what a pep talk. So as the game continues, he's on the side of the field. Same thing. Tackle! Run at 12! He won't tackle! Run at 12! Like, run at this guy! Hit him hard! And we won the game 10-4, and it, wow. was just, it was just amazing, okay? And sure. then I, I remember saying to him in the change room, uh, because earlier on, I said to him, he, I'd met, made a remark in one of the games that I'd gone through a gap, and then he, he basically nearly took my head off. <laughs> with a gap, he said, like, the, uh, the London, that red bus in London could drive have gone through, through that. that. <laughs> Don't ever call that a gap again, okay? So uh, he kept, kept your feet on the ground. Oh, keep my feet on the ground. I'm no, <laughs> he just, no nonsense, okay? Yeah. So, uh, and at the end, it'll be like... Um, Sir, do you think I tackled? He says, what do you think? And I said, yes. He said, that's all I've been trying to hear for eight weeks. It's <laughs> 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 on you to say it. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's like, fantastic. And I think anyone who's had the, the privilege from schoolboy through to kind of uh, False Bay, uh, starred Italy, Springboks, uh, involvement with the Stormers. Yeah. You're only going to be the richer from having had an experience Spot with Nick Mallet as your coach. Okay? What a beaut. But what a great referee as well. Him and Fitzy right up there is two of the best referees in the world. Jeez. Talking of the best referee in the world, do you think Wayne Barnes is the ref best referee? No, I do not. Why is I'm not tell? actually sure who I think is the best ref. I don't know. I quite like a... I quite... I like a referee who's, who, who's strong. Not physically, but just... Barnes, he comes across as a bit sort of wafty. I don't know. Who come? Who come? See it that Zalem? Yeah, and his decision making—it's a bit sort of like mm, question mark. I don't know. I suppose I don't know, that's a, good a ref. that's a big call to talk about a referee in that way. He's forty-four years old. He made his I'm debut at twenty-six. Yeah. Listen to me, mate. <laughs> okay, you're throwing out a big statement about a bloke who also has a legal background. Ah. A bloke who has officiated one hundred and two Test matches, mm. the most in the history of the game. Yeah, he's done. Over 400 first class games. A bloke who made one mistake. <laughs> 2007. <laughs> Quarter final in Cardiff. Oh, no. A forward pass that, it, that, it, that, a, that a quarterback would have been proud of. <laughs> the length that it went forward. He was officiating. Johnny Kaplan was uh, running the touch. In Johnny's defense, he said he hated running the touch. He was probably thinking about going for a glass of wine later. His head was down. <laughs> he said, uh, Johnny said to me that he he did get behind the post and they were showing that replay over and over. And he said to Barnsley, uh, I think we're in trouble here. And Barnsley said they're a good enough team to win it despite this. And then he never gave them a penalty for 44 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and as Richie McCaw said in his autobiography, I think the referee just froze. He wasn't going to give anything. Okay? <laughs> so France made 200 plus tackles all around the ruck and didn't concede one penalty. But I uh, read an interview doing my research with Wayne Barnes uh, yesterday yeah. on the eve of his uh, 100th test, which was the All Blacks against Wales in Cardiff, which the All Blacks did win. Surprise. And uh, he said the most common thing he hears... And he heard before his 100th was, even after 99 Tesh, you're just shit, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he's the Sam Kane of referees. So he's, uh, he's got a good <coughs> sense of humour, I think a dry <laughs> sense of humour. Um, he's very popular on the circuit when, uh, when you speak to other referees. Yeah. And he's very highly rated. Uh, he wasn't highly rated in New Zealand. He became the most hated man because of that forward pass. Uh, people forgot that Johnny Kaplan was actually the one who missed it. Running the touch. I remember I, I bought that book, Seven Magnificent Weeks uh, yes. of the 2007 World Cup. I launched it at the book lounge in Cape Town. Um, Jake, was, uh, he'd written the Ford, was one of the guests there, obviously the, the World Cup winning coach. And in my little speech to set the scene for the night, I, I got up and I just said a special thanks to the the man who won us the World Cup. And Jake got up and I thanked Johnny Kaplan <laughs> for missing that pass because when the All Blacks went out, I knew we were going to win Oh, okay. beautiful. But uh, Wayne Barnes, he has an interesting stat for you. Wayne Barnes, in his first 186 matches, that's 101 and 85 as the running the touch, yes. pre this World Cup, yes. 101 red and yellow cards, six red cards and, uh, and 95 yellow cards in those games he's been involved in. He was also the bloke that in 2013, when uh, Dylan Hartley, that New Zealand-born English skipper, we love that bloke, turned around in a Northampton game and said to him, "You're just an effing cheat." I said, remember What that. did you say? He said, "You're just an effing cheat." He said, "This guy's called me an effing cheat. He's off. 
Red carded him. Good. 11 match ban for Dylan Hartley. Oh, that's ridiculous. But um, yeah. And he missed the Lions too. He missed a few internationals as well. But Wayne Barnes, not afraid to make the decision. Why I rate Wayne Barnes yes. a lot higher than you do, he still makes the decision as a referee. Mm. So whether you agree with it or not, if he's deciding that it's, no, it's an accidental head clash, he tells the TMO, I'm that's happy it was point. accidental that's and I'm point. not going to penalise uh, that player. Or I think it deserves a red. He's going off. I don't care what you say. He's very assertive. I do like that. He doesn't leave it in the hands of the TMO mm. or those running the touch. Mm. So Wayne Barnes, and for those who say uh, he's anti-New Zealand, he missed something in 2007. And come on, guys. Get over it, okay? Get over it. He's refereed a lot of games since then, and you guys have won a lot of games. And I know they're going to point... He's, by the way, we're talking about him because he's refereeing Ireland against the All Blacks this weekend. He refereed Ireland's first ever win at home against the All Blacks 2018, 16 points to nine. He awarded the All Blacks more penalties that day. He refereed Ireland's first ever series win in New Zealand, third and final test, 32-22, when Ireland had led 22-3. Penalty count, 10 to New Zealand, 8 to Ireland. Wayne Barnes wasn't the reason they lost in Dublin. He wasn't the reason they lost in New Zealand. The All Blacks were the reason. But he is the reason you didn't get any sleep last night because you have been doing your homework and trying to remember all of those facts. That's it's, right. It's yeah. like a beautiful mind jam with hey. you, mate. Hey? Yeah, that's right. Wow. Okay. I do remember those big games that Wayne Barnes is in charge and especially the All Blacks because I always see how does he handle the pressure of he's yeah. going to be blamed. Mm. But Wayne Barnes is not the issue. Just like Ben O'Keefe is not the no, issue. Sure. And also, just like Papes won't be the issue. So if you go back to all the World Cups finals mm. you could say in 95 the all blacks could say well the referee favored the spring absolutely box because of mediba and whatever louis late was going to give him okay <laughs> in 99 <laughs> there was no debate because the australians smashed france 35 12 the great owen finnegan try mm. which is not talking about spoken about enough uh ever in terms of world cup final tries when all of 30 meters with a few frenchmen on his back and scored um, commentator Kim was going, go for it, just go for it, and he did. Then we go to 2003. The English fans saying Andre Watson kept Australia in the game for 100 minutes, by the way he officiated the set piece, okay? Then we go to 2007. Nothing in it because Roland was outstanding in the final. 2011, nothing in it in the semi final against Australia. The French say Craig Joubert kept them out and kept New Zealand in the final. The only critique there, Bryce Lawrence, who completely destroyed it uh, in the quarterfinal, lost the plot with us and never refereed again. 2015, no issues in the semifinal or the final, better team won. 2019, no issues in the two semifinals or the final, better team won. Referees have never been an issue as such. No World Cup final has been decided because of shocking referee. The better team has just won on the day. Yeah, look, I think referees have a massive influence on the game, but there's nothing that stops a team from adapting to a referee. And that's why preparation is so key, and I think that's why Russi is such a, such a genius in what he does in terms of he was ahead of the game in terms of analyzing refs, their trends, their tendencies. He's been doing that for more than a decade. So if a referee comes out and he's going to be blowing the breakdown in a way that completely does not suit your team, you have to have the ability to adapt to that and adapt how you're going to control the breakdown or how you're going to get around that to take the referee out of the game. If you keep playing to that, if the referee is blowing, blowing you every time you have an attacking breakdown and you have 150 attacking breakdowns, that you are your own worst enemy. You've put the referee in a position to decide that game. I don't think for a second that referees go out uh, to create a result. I think referees ref how they're going to ref and the way that they ref may suit a team better and if you don't adapt to it, you come off second best. So that's going to apply this weekend, regardless of how good the referee is, how experienced he is. He's got an idea of how he's going to ref the game. The nature of the game um, makes itself vulnerable to those gray areas and how a person interprets things. And so you have to be savvy in rugby, especially at the professional level, to be able to adapt to those trends so that you don't get, you don't get sanctioned. So, I mean, and coaches study referees as much as they do the opponent. Mm. Um, and each referee has a different style. Big time. And so much is down to interpretation. Mm. So we do get the odd shocker in terms of how did the guy miss that. 
Uh, but you get some referees that just a basic ball that drops down. Some will say that's a knock-on, some will say play on. Mm. It didn't go uh, forwards, it didn't go backwards, it just went straight down. Uh, and I think that's the frustrating part. Hanika Mayer once said to me that you can never really argue with a referee because of the complex nature of the, of the laws and then the freedom that they have to interpret those laws. Correct. That if, he turned, if a referee turned around, he said at Lofters, and looked at the grandstand and blew a whistle and gave the opposition a penalty. You could justify it. He would find, he would find something in the law book that would, would show to be correct. Absolutely. So, uh, so just while we're on this point now, given that we both agree that that's a reality, there's no point in having a TMO and replays because we both just admitted it's impossible to ref rugby according to the letter of the law 100% because in any situation you could find something to award to or against any team. Completely. And then uh, the biggest bugbear that I have is TMO should only be for out and out foul play Spot and, on. and a real shocker. Like that ball in four by two miles or he dropped the ball uh, you know, we revisit it to get the right decision. Yeah, the, the TMO should be there to get the right decision, not to betray uh, a decision, on-field decision, or to cause more controversy around it. Because if you slow down every ball exactly. in super slow motion, it looks like the try scorer has lost the ball every exactly. time. Exactly. I'm all for the foul play, and I'm all for where a referee is not sighted and he didn't see, he wants to know. He can call on the TMO. Anything outside of that for me is farcical. Give the game back to the referee. Spot on. Allow that referee to be in charge. Allow that referee to make as many human mistakes as any player does. Correct. And it does balance itself out. Correct. And any referee who's corrupt, who's biased, who has an agenda, will be found out. 100%. And won't be refereeing at that level ever again. I agree. So, uh, World Rugby really has to rethink the way they protect referees because they're not protecting them with more technology. They're putting them in the spotlight more than ever before. And they're depowering them because the weaker referee just goes, I'm not making a decision at Let all. Let Marius make the call. Yeah. Or, and then you've got some TMO who referees the game from a box and he's yeah. in that guy's ear all the time. He's got 15 different camera angles and he's not going with the flow of the game. He's yeah. going back three, four phases and looking something four or five times. Yeah. It is a contact sport. There are going to be mistakes. I yeah. mean, the interpretation, as we keep on saying, accidental head clash gets a red card. Uh, every time a guy picks up and drives close to the, the try line, his head hits another player's head. Yeah. It's never even picked up. Yeah. We've missed one guy, the last one, and I think he's the best one. You just told me Wayne Barnes is the best. He's the best in the world. But mate, of, the four, mate. of the four, I like his approach to the game the most. Our Frenchman. He's my favorite. Give me his name. Matthew Reynolds. Give it to me with a roar. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way to say it than that. <laughs> Matteo Reynolds. What do you like about him? I like him. I like the way he walks. I like the way he talks. I like the way he blows his whistle. I love his calm, eh? And it could be that... His car? He's calm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he drives, mate. <laughs> what is it? I did my research. A mate. Peugeot. <laughs> a Citroen. I like his calm. One of those old ones with the hydraulics. Because, <laughs> and it could be because he's officiating in, uh, he's officiating in. Um, in France. In English, oh. but he's thinking in French. <laughs> you and, know what he's thinking in. Yeah. And, I like that. And the guys are screaming around him and he's, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> and he's calming them all down. The Australians especially. And he says, wait. <laughs> wait. Scrum black. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> I, I, that's exactly and why I like And he went him. through, and that third and final test as well, British and Irish Lions against the Springboks, there were so many decisions that he could have given against the Springboks if he hadn't been uh, as strong mentally, was well, kind of as certain in the way he officiates games. Yeah. And uh, just, he could have sent Jasper Visa off just before half time. Most would have seen Jasper straight back to England. <laughs> exactly. The way he came roaring into that straight breakdown to and then he decapitated four Lions players. Yeah. He looked at the, the, the TMO, said it's definitely off. The TMO said that, and he said, no, nah, there's contact. Half time. And off I he went. It. And so I really enjoy the games that he officiates because he doesn't believe in this flow spectacle. 100%. He's the one guy that I honestly think just applies the law as he sees it. Consistently. Consistently. And yeah. like you said, he's calm. I mean, other refs. Oh, Yaku Paves takes a deep breath before he blows that whistle. Oh, Reynald is a... It's just chaos. Oaks are running around. They think the game's still going on. And, and he's Brrr. certainly not going to want Fiji to win in a flamboyant style. He's going to apply the game. And the most ill-disciplined side there will lose the game. So Fiji's going home. 
PG <laughs> were going home after they beat Australia, mate. They should have gone on the plane with it. Hey? Their World Cup was done and dusted that day. Yeah. To go out and then struggle against Georgia and then to lose to Portugal. Jeez. Um, and I've done a bit more research on that Portuguese side. I don't think any of them have been to Lisbon. <laughs> None of them speak Portuguese. <laughs> they speak French. <laughs> that was a victory for, for, that is for, for Pro 12. The closest that they've been to Portugal is the Nando's in Paris. <laughs> hilarious. Hot and spicy. Pre yeah. rolls, eh? Mm. What was your thing about prego rolls the other day? I said it's quite difficult to tackle guys covered in prego sauce. <laughs> okay, mate. Yeah. Oaks loved, the, Oaks loved your kind of uh, Ricky combination. I don't know if you were Ricky or Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know I'm if you were confused. Mexican or Portuguese. <laughs> but some guy did say you do have a bit of a Portuguese look to you. Oh, really? Could be that you were born Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like uh, got him there. We're talking about referees. Uh, we got, I think, the four best yep. at the World Cup. Yep. And I think we got four with three different types of personalities. I'm glad we got Ben O'Keefe, and I'm also glad that the All Blacks and Ireland got Wayne Barnes. Because mm. uh, I don't think he does like New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Busted! Got him! <laughs> but I'm going to end off with a little tale oh, about a referee. Mate. Paddy O'Brien. Oh, <laughs> that the guy was a legend. Eh? The great. He's a legend, and, and oh. just such personality, such humour. And we played... Um, Australia at Ellis Park and oh. uh, we had lost to them in Brisbane and Ben Tune had boasted that he had can hit corner cricket okay uh, in the the career matter was like oh, I can hit cricket cowardly but he had knocked him uh, not near senses because corner never got knocked out he just got up and played <laughs> on <laughs> so Paddy was very concerned in the return match that corner would clock uh, Ben Tune he came into the change room before and to do the checking all the studs as they used to do in those days <laughs> and kind of had a little word to Corne and Corne very indignant like come on Paddy and the game has even started you're already singling me out you yeah. know they gave this whole hoo-ha about if he sees Ben Tune bleed basically corner has gone okay well lo and behold <laughs> <laughs> surprise surprise first kick on Ben Tune takes him to the ruck and obviously who's bleeding Ben Tune and Paddy looks for everything can't find anything Afterwards, he says to Corne, did you hit Ben Tune? Of course I hit Ben Tune, okay? <laughs> what do you and, think? And, he, and he just thought it was a, a great story. But that test, we hadn't won a game in the, in the Tri-Nations back then, which wasn't unusual. <laughs> that era, okay? Um, and we were 26-9 up, 45, 50 minutes into the game. Uh, Joe Fanukuk, sublime, uh, was just outstanding. A youthful Joe, just... Just flying down that touchline, the grandstand touchline and scoring. Um, and then some other tide turned and it became 26 all. <laughs> <laughs> In front of 60,000 people. And then Australia scored 31-26. Oh, mate. And George Cregan showed the crowd a couple of luck fingers. <laughs> and they threw the nachos with all the brandy on. <laughs> and thank God they missed the, and that's the Lord again. Thank him. They missed the conversion. 31-26. Injury time. We kick off. Skin stat. Magnificent in just oh. winning the ball back. Play a couple of phases. Bola Conradi pops a short one. <laughs> Van Achreff. Straight, Straight through. through. Try Three time. 31 all. But we don't have a kicker. Brent Russell's playing fly. He's missed two out of four. Vanna. No one wants to kick. Everyone walks back to the halfway line. It's poor Van is the only guy with the ball. Paddy's, are you going to kick? Yep. Must have seemed like an eternity. Okay. Everyone knows he kicked it, 33-31, famous win for the box. But at one stage, Matt Burke, obviously checking the clock, which is now into about two minutes, said to Paddy O'Brien, are you going to call him for time? <laughs> and Paddy's response were, was, my balls are big, but not that big. <laughs> <laughs> we'll chat to you on Friday when we talk. Who's going to win the quarterfinals and who's going through to the last four of Rugby World Cup?